Limited, Morrison and Company Limited, against ICL Plastic Limited and others. Lord Reid will explain the judgment of the court. Most legal systems have time limits for the bringing of legal claims. In Scotland, the time limit for bringing claims for damages, other than claims relating to personal injuries, is normally five years from the date when the loss or damage was suffered. There is, however, a statutory provision enabling the starting date of a five-year period to be postponed. This appeal is concerned with the interpretation of that provision. The appeal concerns an action of damages brought by Morrison in respect of damage which was caused to its shop when there was an explosion at ICL's factory. The appeal is not concerned with the claims of those who were killed or injured in the explosion and has no effect on those claims. Morrison's claim was for damage to its property. It brought the action more than five years after the explosion. At first sight, therefore, the action was brought out of time. The question is whether Morrison can rely on the statutory provision which allows the commencement of the five-year period to be postponed. That provision is section 11.3 of the Prescription and Limitation Scotland Act of 1973. Read short, it provides that where on the date when the loss or damage occurred, the claimant was not aware that loss, injury, or damage caused as aforesaid had occurred, time does not begin to run until the date when the claimant first became so aware. So the first question is whether the provision applies only where the claimant was not aware that he had suffered loss or damage, or whether it also applies where the claimant was aware that he had suffered loss or damage, but was not aware that it had been caused as aforesaid. That is linked to a second question as to the meaning of the words caused as aforesaid. They seem to refer back to a phrase which appears earlier in section 11, caused by an act, neglect, or default, a phrase which had been interpreted by the House of Lords in earlier legislation as meaning a breach of duty. So do the words refer simply to the factual cause of the damage or do they also refer to the breach of duty giving rise to the claim? The courts below followed an approach adopted in some earlier decisions of the outer house of the court of session and later approved in the inner house in a case in which the issue did not arise. According to that approach, the running of time is postponed by section 11.3 until the claimant knows that he has suffered damage and also knows that it was caused by, by negligence or some other breach of duty. On the facts of this case, it was held in the outer house that Morrison knew on the date of the explosion that it had suffered damage, and it should have been obvious to it on that date that the damage was the result of negligence, since explosions don't normally occur if proper care is taken. The five-year period, therefore, was held to run from the date of the explosion, and it had expired before the action began. The action was therefore dismissed. That decision was reversed by the inner house, which accepted that Morrison knew about the damage on the date of the explosion, but considered that it was not obvious that the explosion was due to negligence. ICL now appeals to the Supreme Court. By a majority of three to two, the Supreme Court allows the appeal. The reasoning of the majority is set out in a judgment written by myself with which Lord Newberger and Lord Sumption agree, and also in a concurring judgment by Lord Newberger. The reasoning of the minority is set out in a judgment by Lord Hodge with which Lord Toulson agrees. All the members of the court agree that the interpretation of section 11.3, which was followed by the Court of Session, is incorrect. For reasons that are explained in detail in the judgments, the majority consider that the provision is concerned only with awareness that loss or damage has occurred. It is designed to deal with the problem of latent damage, that is to say, damage which is not discovered until after it has occurred. That interpretation appears to the majority to be the most natural interpretation of a provision in its context, having regard to the way in which other provisions of the Act have been drafted. 
It also avoids the difficulties and anomalies which result from making the running of time depend on a person's awareness of a legal matter, uh, namely that the loss has been caused by the breach of a legal duty, rather than simply awareness of a factual matter, namely that he has suffered loss or damage. The minority of the court would have interpreted the provision as requiring awareness both of the damage and also of the factual cause of the damage, but not of its being a breach of duty. Since Morrison was aware of the damage on the date of the explosion, it follows from the decision of the majority that the five-year period began to run on that date and had expired before the action was brought. The action must therefore be dismissed. The result of this decision will be to simplify the application of Section 11.3 and to make it properly reflect what the majority consider to have been the intention of Parliament. It will mean that claimants who know that they have suffered loss will have five years to complete their inquiries into the cause of the damage and the possibility of a legal claim before they have to bring proceedings, rather than the potentially longer but more uncertain period which they had under the previous interpretation of a provision. It is pointed out in the judgments that this is an area of a law which has been recommended for reform by the Scottish Law Commission, uh, but that its report has never been implemented by Parliament. <clears throat>